Okay, uh, it's Mobility TV here, and I'm uh, here with a special guest and a person that I can actually say is a mentor, role model, someone that I always looked up to, and uh, it's an honor and a privilege, privilege to have this man talk on my show uh, I don't, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm lost for words just for having this man on my show. Activist, poet, book writer, scholar, you know, am I missing anything, brother? Please let me know if I'm missing anything. But at the same time, I want you to go ahead and introduce yourself to the people, man. My name is Marvin X. I'm a revolutionary. Oh, like wow. brother Fred Hampton Jr. said or his daddy Fred Hampton Sr. I am a revolutionary so I'm a revolutionary artist Paul Robeson said the artist must decide whether he's on the side of the people are on the side of the oppressor. So Paul Robin, Paul Robinson decided he was an artistic freedom fighter. So I'm in the tradition of Paul Robinson, one of the baddest black men who ever walked the earth. So I'm traveling in his shoes. I'm standing on his shoulders as an artist but as a revolutionary artist, as a freedom fighter. I don't write just for writing sake. I don't write to be commercial. I don't write for popularity or to be famous. I write because I know I have a gift from God. And as my mama used to say, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. If you don't use the gift that God has given you, you will lose the gift. So I don't want that. So in the fourth quarter of my life, at 74 years old, I'm still writing and fighting. As a matter of fact, writing is fighting. But it's the pen of a scholar, as Brother Hakeem just said. It's the pen of a scholar. It's the pen of a conscious black man walking through the bowels of the earth. So that's who I am. So let, let me let me ask you this, man. Uh, where, where where are you from? Yes, where are you originally from? You're born, where were you born, you know, things like that? Well, I was born in the Central Valley, nine miles south of Fresno in a little town called uh, Fowler. Basically, an area known as the raisin capital of the world. If you've ever had those little box of raisins with sun-made raisins on the cover of the box. Yeah. That town is called Selma. All in that area from Fresno to Selma is the raising capital of the world. So I was born there and grew up in Fresno and partly in West Oakland. Okay, but see on your on your uh on I looked. Uh, I looked on your Wikipedia, and it tells me that you also uh, went to uh, San Jose. No, excuse me. Is it uh, San Francisco State and graduated and got your BA? How did that? How did that occur? How did you? What, what made you want to do that? What made you want to be a successful person that you are? But at the beginning, what did you do? What? What? Because you know, I know you had stumbling blocks and things of that nature. Being a young black man. I know you wasn't raised in a rich area or anything like that. I know you had stomach box and, you know, like everybody else, drugs and all that kind of thing. But what made you do? Because, man, you, 
you did I looked at your Wikipedia man you did some things man can you give us a little sample of what made you want to go that path well first of all I was blessed to have conscious parents parents who were not deaf dumb and blind to what was going on in the world as a matter of fact uh, when I was born my parents had a black newspaper in Fresno called the Fresno Voice. This was, I was born in 1944. So they were already in newspaper publishing and plus they had a real estate business. And so I grew up in a conscious household with my parents discussing uh, racial matters and white supremacy and of the black black belt south and the cotton curtain and the NAACP and racial injustice. So I grew up in a household with this type of consciousness. So I didn't just spring out of the water or out of the woods or out of the raisin patch or cotton patch without some roots. Yeah. from my parents and my uh, my great grandfather was uh, Ephraim Merle and there's a newspaper article that was published in the Fresno Beat in 1941 uh, celebrating his passing he was I think uh, about 99 years old and he had been the first 20 years of his life he had been a slave and he say his name uh, again up say his name again up pardon me say his name again Ephraim Ephraim Merle M-U-R-R-I-L-L -L. that's my uh, maternal uh, Ephraim Merle. family name so when he died it was a big article in the Fresno Bee in 1941 so and it said that he was respected by blacks and whites. So you know he had to be something if he was uh, respected by blacks and whites and given a big article in the Fresno Bee in 1941. Wow. When we were still in segregation, basically. Yeah, exactly. So I'm honored to be uh, from his roots as well. But so growing up, uh, I attended high school in Fresno and I became uh, a radical student in high school because at a certain point I stopped standing up to salute the flag and you know some of my fellow students uh, thought it was crazy but I wasn't crazy I would just becoming aware of what was going on in the world and I had enough sense to know that the flag didn't represent me. But further, my fellow students recognized who I was and what I was, maybe sometimes even when I didn't. Because they've told me uh, years later, they say, Marvin, when uh, we went to class, we we didn't want to hear what the what the what the teacher had to say. We waited for you to come, and we wanted to hear what you had to say. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I wasn't really aware of this, mm -hmm. but as I uh, continued on, and I lived between Oakland and Fresno, so when I spent my elementary years between Oakland and Fresno and uh, uh, junior high, I was in Oakland at uh, Lowell Junior High. And uh, as I, uh, after graduation from Edison High in Fresno, I attended Merritt College in Oakland, uh, Oakland City College. And my fellow students just happened to be uh, Huey Newton and Bobby Seale. Wow. Co-founders of the Black Panther Party. Exactly. So 
these being with these young men uh heighten my consciousness my black consciousness my african consciousness because i i i we studied together we had peer group what, what you know now is a peer group study independent study we studied outside of class we studied on our own because there was no black studies in 1962 when i came to oakland city college our merit college in oakland so we studied on our own and we studied about the black revolution we studied about the world revolution we studied the cuban revolution the chinese revolution the african revolution the Latin American Revolution, the Vietnamese Revolution. We studied Ho Chi Minh's writings. We studied Mao Zedong. We studied uh, Fidel Castro. We studied Patrice Lumumba, Nelson Mandela, and Kwame Nkrumah. Jomo Kenyatta. These are some of the books that we studied, some of the authors that we studied outside of class. Outside of class, who we were self-motivated as, as Bobby Seale said once in, in the interview I did with him, he said we were the the neo black intellectuals, the new black intellectuals, and that's who we were. But we recognized that there was a revolution going on in America, but there was also a revolution going on in all over the world, and we were connected, and we were part of that vibration. That, that, what the word Bob say, the lost of vibration that was going on all over the world. So, this uh, is what I uh, was educated and married about. And of course, Merritt became the birthplace of the Black Panther Party. And uh, not only the Black Panther Party, but the Black Hawks Movement. Black studies, etc. So I graduated from Merritt College, Oakland City College, in 1964, and I transferred to San Francisco State College, now University. And when I got to state, I continued my uh, search for radical consciousness and knowledge and wisdom. And I became a member of the Negro Students Association. And it wasn't long before the Negro Student Association changed to the Black Student Union at San Francisco State. Wow. So wait a minute. Time on, time on, time on, time on. So you trying to tell me that you basically, you guys are the founders of the Black Student Union? Excuse me? You, 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 and your friends are the founders of the Black Student Union, because they use the Black yes. Student Union today. Not only were we the founder of the Black Student Union, the Black Student Union at San Francisco State had a the longest student strikes and the most violent student strikes in American history. The student strike was to establish black studies at San Francisco State. So in 1968, and today, we are celebrating the 50th anniversary of the 1968 student strike for the establishment of black studies at San Francisco State. So I was one of the visionaries, students, who was influenced and influenced that strike for black studies. And the black studies, as I said, at San Francisco State was the first black studies program on a major academic college or university in America. And the first chair of the black studies program at San Francisco State was uh, Dr. Nathan Hare, who was, who was eventually uh, banned from teaching because of his uh, revolutionary activism and even before he got to San Francisco State, Dr. Hare had taught at uh, Howard University, at where among his students were uh, Sophie Carmichael, Kwame Torre, and uh, Brother Claude, uh, what was it, that wrote Man Child in the Promised Land. I forget his last name. 